Hello and welcome to Captain Bob. Today we'll be building the GNS 530. This is a really cool project, so buckle up. For this build, you'll need all of these materials. If you want to find the 3D printing files or the circuit board, they're in the description below. And if you want to buy it as a kit or assembled, there's a pre-order going on right now. Just check the description. I have a bomb. I spent a lot of time on it. It's something you should never say on an aircraft. However, I do have a BOM, so refer to it right here, and then the one in the description will be all the way up to date. Woohoo! Let's start with the circuit board. Thank you so much to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. PCBWay is an awesome circuit board fabrication service. You just drag up your file, upload it, and boom, you'll get your circuit board soon after, and you're ready to go. I've really enjoyed using the matte black. It looks really cool. It is PCBWay's 10th anniversary, which means there's tons of great deals until the end of August. There's some details below. Thank you so much, PCBWay. Give them a try and back to the video. I'm going to start on these inside components on the back and then work my way from short to tall on the outside components. The first component I'm going to solder down are these IDC connectors. These are 40 pin connectors and you only need one of them. The reason is uh, that there are two modes this can be in. You can have it externally configured and then just run this to an external Arduino or you can have it internally configured. With the Arduino here it runs through all of these uh, components and then you have extra pins, so you just port those out through here, and you can p power a second GPS unit. I know this sounds simple, but this took me like weeks and weeks and iterations to get just right so that the Arduino has just enough pins for the GPS and then just enough for an extra GPS. Now we can have our Arduino power the GPS and then all the extra pins from the Arduino just port it out through this 40 pin connector. I'm actually going to solder both of these on because I'm an evil scientist, uh, just to give me more options. I like to always put my Arduinos on female pin headers, so you have the option to remove the Arduino if you want. Um, and let's just add these female pin headers right now. I put on this headset so that it'd look like I'm from the future editing or something. You might want to do these resistors before you do these pin headers. These resistors are shorter, so you can lie them up against the table while you solder these up. It'll make it a lot easier. Thank you, future Trevor. I wish I had you when I was putting this together. I'm so tired. It feels like it's not a lot of pins, <laughs> but it is. But just keep chugging. Now you can add your IDC connector to either side you want, or both if you want to procrastinate your decision like me. And just make sure that this slot right here lines up with this little slot right here. Now flip it over and <laughs> continue soldering. So many pins. I'm going to leave the Arduino off for now and then add it as the last piece. Kind of like in Lego sets how you're supposed to leave the wheels off until the end except I never had the patience for that and always put them on at the beginning so that I could play with it while I built it. Let's move on to the resistors. Now there are resistors on both sides um, and you have nine of them. They're all 47 ohms and then you also have a few of these male pin header locations. R5 is a 10k ohm resistor. 10k. That is not enough to buy a plane, not enough to buy a down payment on a house, not even enough to buy a car here. That's depressing, but a resistor is cool, so let's go ahead and do those. Unfortunately, my camera wasn't recording for this resistor part. Oh man. Sorry, I couldn't resist. But we can imagine that through the magic of editing. I then added this 10k ohm resistor right here. Note R5 is the only non 47 ohm resistor. Um, and 47 ohms is calculated for 5 volts. Uh, you'll have to do your own math for 12 volts. Um, but I'll put that value on the screen now. I just forgot what it is off the top of my head. I have this photo resistor here. It shouldn't matter too much which photo resistor you get because you can calibrate it yourself in MobiFlight. And this is my first time using a photoresistor, 
So we will see if it works. Now let's work on the next shortest thing, which is my attention span. Oh my gosh, I started that on fire. See? Whee! Let's work on the next shortest thing, that is the LEDs. So your LEDs have a long end and a short end. And they also have a flat end and a round end. The long end is left. Left is long. Left is long. Don't worry, I'm not that smooth in real life. That was just editing magic. So now, before we solder these all in for perpetuity, uh, we can test them if we want. And that's where we can get a 5 volt power supply, hook up the ground to ground, and then the 5 volts to 5 volts. And we can see our magnificent backlighting. And we can see that some of it isn't working. This issue is fixed, but basically I disconnected a trace, so I reconnected it here. Our next step is to put in the LED buttons. Now these just go in like so. Now the long pin on the LED is positive because if you are positive, you will live longer. That is what I always say, always have, and always will, uh, unless it's scientifically proven otherwise. Then that would kind of be uh, false mnemonic. Does it bug any of you that I went around in a circle and then skipped one and came back to it? It bugs me. All right. Now that is looking pretty good. With the exception of these four I messed up on, and when I release this, the PCB will be fixed. Uh, with the exception of those, I'm all ready to rock. I hate the sun. All right, now we have our two encoders. We can throw these in right here, flip it over, and then solder. Or solder, if you are in not America. Now we just solder the buttons on and we're done. I really don't know why I waited until it was at a weird angle, but such is life. And now for the last piece. Ta-da! Now I can change out of my soldering shirt and we'll be all ready to go. Now I got my assembly shirt. So let's start out by putting these four screws in. These should be countersunk. And if you want, you can very gently countersink the circuit board even further, uh, but make sure to watch out for any traces. These will be the eight millimeter countersunk screws. And on the back, you'll have your 20 millimeter female to female spacers. Now we can work on this piece. We have a clear piece and it's clear. So I have no clue where it went. Ah, and then this will go right here. You can glue that in place using some transparent glue. Um, you don't want to ruin its clarity. Just don't do so much glue that it leaks out the front. That would be awkward. Or if you have a multicolor printer, you can do something like this. Here I have everything in black, the text in white, and then this finally right here in clear. Now while that's drying, we can work on these heat set inserts. Now we're going to add the heat set inserts with our soldering iron. I'm going to now place all of these on top of the buttons. The buttons go on the button. Put the monitor into its bezel, like so, and I can just let it down slowly. If you let me down, let me down slowly. Something about something and a slushy. Okay, there we go. Now you can finally clean the screen off. Honorable mention, take the screen protector off before you install the screen. We have everything here and we can flip it over and then we can install these. But these require a flush backing, so we'll need to do a lot of trimming. I have these side snips and I'm just gonna go ham. We now know one thing for sure. I'll be cleaning these up for months. Now you can install these shields right here and then this one will be a 12 millimeter M3 screw. More snipping. <laughs> I'll leave this side to the end so I have access area um, with it also being fixed down, but also I just printed the wrong variant, so. 
We also have this bracket, which goes to this PCB. So we can attach this through the bottom here. So I screwed two screws through here. Now let's mount the controller board. Before we mount it, we're going to put in the ribbon cable into the board. This will be a little tricky, so uh, grab your patience boots. Especially if you've taken it apart four times to film videos for it. And every iteration has something. Now we can use the eight millimeter screws on the bottom right here. And then attach this assembly to the top using 12 millimeter M3 screws. Finally, plug it in. Now's a good time to install this other end and work on the front pieces. We have our little volume knobs right here. And now we can install the dual encoder knobs. Right now you do have the option to add some M2 12 millimeter screws. Um, there's the tiny holes right here, 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 and here. And then these just help the monitor to stay in place. Now you want to be very careful here because you are drilling a screw into the monitor. You're drilling it into the monitor's little pocket holes. But if you do drill into the monitor, you will have uh, quite a nasty time. Let's insert these screws. And then we can see after even just adding one screw, all of the monitor motion has stopped. I'll just add the corner screws right here and then install this panel right here. This is a shunt. Shunned is what you get when you come home past curfew, but a shunt bridges two pins right here. Now we'll see bridge for internal, and if we select that over the two pins here, you'll see all of our backlighting is happening. Of course, I'm using all black, so the backlighting isn't showing through, but if you use something like this, you get a beautiful picture. My radio stack system uses these racks right here that you can 3D print, and then I just put it in, and then from behind the panel, I screw in some M3 screws to attach it this way on both sides. If you want to use backlighting, print this all in white and then spray paint the front black. Use multiple coats. I think I usually do between five and eight. Grab some sandpaper or a file and then just file off the lettering. I just did one coat because I put this out in the sun and it completely warped. I plan on backlighting mine in the future. I just have to go back and forth across town to spray paint each coat. This is awesome. It's fully functional and it even has the fingerprints on it, just like the real one. It's the real deal. Now let's go ahead and connect this to the computer. We'll need to plug in the Arduino right here, the monitor's 12 volt power supply, and finally your HDMI cable. You can then use the source button back here to cycle through the sources. This is awesome, but it's duplicated and upside down. So let's go to display settings, extend these displays, move it however you want to. And then under display two, we're going to flip this upside down. Set display orientation to landscape flipped. Now it's correct. Keep changes and you're all set up there. You can do this the manual way where you hop into a flight, hold down the right alt key, not the left alt key, hover over the GNS 530 screen, pop it out, and then just drag it over. And that's simple, uh, but you can also use Pop-Up Manager. I'm going to download Pop-Out Manager right here. Save it to wherever and run the EXE. If you're having trouble, try downloading this redistributable software. There's a getting started guide right here, or you can struggle through it like I like to do. I have this right here, and then I'm just going to right click, extract all. Now I'm going to open this exe right here, and when it opens, click more info, run anyway. This window now opens, and let's open Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now I can click here to start, make a Cessna 172, click accept, and then we'll add our GNS 530 right here. Click to add, we'll name it GNS 530. And now let's click identify to give it a position. That'll let you put this little crosshair and you're, you'll just drag this over the GNS 530. You don't want to pop out a cloud or something. I don't think that works. So you have your little target there and then you click the toggle editing button right here. And now we can edit our name. You have 0000, zero, zero, zero and if you start pop out, don't touch anything. 
you'll have this little pop out right here. And then as you drag it, it'll adjust the position. So you don't have to worry about this, but you can fine tune it right here. Now we'll drag it to my other screen. And now it's popped out like this. Awesome. But let's full screen it. So click this little drop down here and then click full screen. Boom. We're testing a theory, it's maybe gonna work. I have no clue if it'll work because this is my first time doing it actually because when I did it in the live stream, it I just went to settings and clicked auto start and then start minimized. I thought that would be kind of cool. Now when I start a flight, pop-up manager is executing. Ta-da! That's great, but nothing works. That's where MobiFlight comes into play, and there's a link in the description below for where to download it. Once we're in MobiFlight, you can click File, Open, and then in the C172 project files, go to your GNS530 folder. That'll be in Section 2, 2-6 Avionics, and then it'll be GPS GNS530. It won't be a prototype because I'll go through this huge long checklist, write up a BOM and do stuff and make sure everything's cool and make these things glow in the dark or whatever. And um, ah. Anyways, uh, click Moby Flight and then we have this GNS530 MSFS right here. I'll probably eventually make an X-Plane one, um, although I'm kind of slow to make X-Plane ones. We can now see our input configs right here. And we notice we don't have any modules. Uh, there's one plugged in, but it's not connected to anything. So let's click Moby Flight Modules and update the firmware to an Arduino Mega 2560. It flashes as a blank Arduino. We can go to Open and then find this GNS530 onboard Arduino V1.2. That's for if you're having it onboard. And then we have this file here. We can click Upload Config. and then go to Extras, Manage Orphan Serials, and we can click GNS530, select our Arduino from this list here, and then click Assign. Now I'm all loaded up, I can click Run. It's automatically popping out, and now since it's running, we can interact with everything. So I can zoom in right here, I can switch from CDI to VLOC, Go direct to K, D, E, N, Denver International, activate, and now, boom, flight plan to Denver. I can adjust the frequencies here, switch them. This is pretty freaking awesome. Now we have our own GPS and I can click all of the buttons. I'm clicking them so hard and things are happening. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you PCB Way for sponsoring the video. And thank you Bala, Chris, Christopher, David, ECD Crew, Herman, Joseph, Juan Fortas, Marcelo, Morgan, Pierre, and Scott for supporting on Patreon. You guys are all amazing and help support projects like this now and in the future. So thank you again for your support. All right, everyone. Thank you for watching. Have a fantabulous day. Stay spicy and stay out of your immediate neighbor's trash cans. Have a good one.